number one Idi Amin had a very cute laugh okay I'm just kidding about that one <laughs> number one is actually Idi Amin was a very good sportsman I grew up hearing stories that one time when the Uganda Cranes which is the official football team for Uganda went to play in the African Cup of Nations tournament he promised them a very huge prize if they won but if they lost he would spank all of them on the airport tarmac just after the aeroplane Air Uganda had flown them back I'm not sure if this story is true but what I know for sure is that he loved rugby he enjoyed rally cars and was an expert swimmer his big physique it was six foot four in height implied that Idi Amin always stood out of the crowd wherever he went he was also Uganda's light heavyweight champion for a period of nine years from 1951 to 1960 number two Idi Amin believed he was popular I am very popular Obote is against any leader popular in Uganda. Of course you need to be popular to have people from years back and people in current times talking about you. We have so many movies about his regime. There is the example of the rise and fall of Idi Amin. Then you had the King of Scotland in which uh, Forrest Whitaker played the role of Idi Amin. You have the recent Seven Days at Entebbe, which narrates the raid on Entebbe. And then there was another movie called Raid on Entebbe. Several other movies that have been acted. I'm also glad to hear that the, that the Uganda Tourism Board will be developing an actual uh, separate Idi Amin trail um, to give people a feel of the story and bring to life the story of Idi Amin. Number three. This man had many titles. Of course, he was the president of Uganda, so he had the title of His Excellency. He had the title of President for Life, which I find very sarcastic. And he was a devout Muslim, so he got the title of, of Al Haji. I guess he made quite a number of trips to Mecca. And then there was a story of a vice chancellor who went missing. Um, and then after some time, we had that. Idi Amin attained a doctorate. Idi Amin also called himself the commander-in-chief of the armed forces but he also had to give himself the title of army chief of staff that he amassed the highest rank in the army field marshal and actually till that that title is reflected on the website of the Ugandan State House. Idi Amin also had the Victorious Cross which is a prestigious title in the British Army. Uh, he had the Distinguished Service Order, Military Cross. He referred to himself as the last King of Scotland. When he fell out with the British in 1977, he thought it wise to brand himself the conqueror of the British Empire. Actually, at this time, the British Commission was closed. And it's, this, it's during the same time that he shifted his alliance from Britain to the Islamic wing, so the Islamic countries. Amin was also the chairman of the o OAU, that's the organization of the African of African unity, which today is the African Union. The, the, the deadly poison to the unity frater, fra, fra, fraternity and the independent of African states is now in its final stage of preparation in the political labor laboratories of the South African regime. So he was the chairman in 1975. And then he was com commonly referred to as Big Daddy, I guess because of his huge physique. So title number 15, which is probably my last, but also uh, most funny of them all is he called himself the Lord of all the beasts of the earth 
and the fish of the sea. Number four, Idi Amin had the most hilarious speeches you'll ever hear. Amin was known to throw around wrong English phrases. He often wrongly used the words absolutely and completely when he was talking and trying to emphasize a point. He actually at one point said, I think you guys mock me because you do not understand what is in my head because I do not know how to relay it in speech. He wished they were in his brain to actually understand what exactly he meant. Here's one of his speeches that I find quite intriguing. But this particular second point is very important. You must teach people to love their leader. This is the only most important. Like any country, Kissinger is not very intelligent. Kissinger always go to the weakest leaders. He never go to Gaddafi. He never come to General Amin. He fears us. Number three, determinations. You people must work with the determinations and all other peoples. You must teach them to work with the determinations. If I go sometime even in the Ministry of Defense, I will not find even some commanders there in their offices. I know this. I've been telephoning several times, checking with them I can't find. They are in their business in Kawempe, in somewhere, in Kampala, what? You must put your contribution. If I found you not to attend cabinet three times without reason, you are out of government. And as a doctor, you must be very clean, very smart. You behave very well like a person. And also, you are not too drunk. You are the one who should advise the public. You should advise General Min not to drink. This is very important. Because if, if a public learn that you are a drunkard, automatically they lose confidence and even they can say that if i am going to get operation by that doctor is a drunkard he will not do anything and they will completely refuse i am telling you sincerely also to drink and over drunk it is not very good you will not even enjoy more because you will you will not even have sense but if you drink very little, you feel very happy, very proud, and you talk to your people, that will be... I'm just advising you. <laughs> and you should know that a spy is a criminal. To be a spy is very bad. And your case is death completely, sentence. This is, I must make it absolutely clear. If I found anybody is a spy, and any spy is found, and anybody is coming in this... Five, Idi Amin was extremely assertive and he got his point across. Idi Amin was arrogant, there's no doubt about that. He got what he wanted and he changed course whenever he felt something wasn't going the way he had envisioned it. One time he tricked some British chaps into carrying him aloft. Another time he threatened them into bowing down to him. The conqueror of the British Empire, I guess, badly explains why. And there was that interview where he must have sent shockwaves down a British journalist's spine when she, when, when he asked about um, his foreign policy. You shouldn't. If you want, you come direct to Uganda and get your representative in Kampala so that he can give you accurate information. But I wanted to ask you, are you not afraid of... Uh, interviewing the conqueror of British Empire as you are British you are not afraid of 
but adding to his crazy policies and infamous foreign policy, he got the liking of some of the world's most controversial leaders. He seemed to like Hitler, um, Libya's Muammar Gaddafi was a good friend of his, Arafat from the Middle East was a good friend of his. He, he got quite the attraction from the Soviet, from, from Russia and uh, Russia and all those nations. Number six, Idi Amin needed no PR officer. Of course, there are stories of journalists who unfortunately got their nuts squeezed for putting out the wrong stories. There's a funny one about a journalist. There's a, there's a journalist that narrates um, a story to NTV Uganda, um, and he says he wrote this interest, this story about the, the about Idi Amin's raid on Tanzania, where where he intended to say Idi Amin wrapped Tanzania. But there was a spelling mistake in the headline and it came out as Idi Amin Reps Tanzania. So this guy was called in to meet Idi Amin, a furious Idi Amin. Um, and <laughs> the funny thing is that he was freaked out to the peak and he messed his pants. The stomach, the stomach, and... <laughs> Yeah. The poo poo. <laughs> I said now, how can I poo poo in the office of the president? So I closed the hole. It exploded. <laughs> I doubt Idi Amin needed a public relations officer back then. If you have a look at all his interviews, you see how jolly, how uh, well composed he was in front of the camera. I can't tell you any secrecy because you might pass this information to South Africa, which I am actually aiming to destroy Johannesburg and, the, and uh, Cape Town. This is my aim. This, uh, this, I'm very serious about this. I must make it absolutely truth. The reason why I chased them from Uganda was because of the economy of Uganda. Uganda was going to be bankrupt. That is the reason why I chased away the Israelis. <laughs> why do you ask me about Hitler? The Hitler's problem is now past tense. Now we are looking forward for the future. I have no anybody intention from now onwards. I wanted to be very friendly to entire world community. Thank you very much. Actually, you can watch this interview with the BBC after he'd fled to exile in Saudi Arabia. He still had the confidence. I am fresh, strong, and I am concerned with the situation in Uganda. Most of them, they love me, they pass their information to me, and uh, they want me uh, to save them from the chaos situation which is now happening in Uganda. My intention is to work for my people, but not for me. Uh, that is the reason why uh, you know that if you check all banks all over the world, in Europe, in Asia, in Africa, in the United States of America, you will never find account belong to me because I work for the people of Uganda. I am a founder of the economic independence of Uganda. Number seven, Idi Amin was a family man and he loved his kids. According to his sons Hussein and Jaffa, Idi Amin had quite a number of kids. He's reported to have fathered at least 40 children, but his son Jaffa, while speaking to CCTV, says they could have been more than 60. <laughs> he married many and it's reported that he held quite extravagant weddings. 
actually one of the weddings he planned to happen during the OAU summit while it was in Kampala and one of the heads of state had to be his best man. There's this fascinating story about how he really loved music, he actually used to play the accordion um, but he enjoyed live music and often at the end of the party he would live with a lead singer or the cutest girl in the band. <laughs> a lot of them ended up as my mothers. Actually, Daily Monitor reports that months before his death in Saudi Arabia in 2003, he had just recently married another wife. Although the public saw his aggressive side, his children say he was a very loving dad. The last one, and that's number eight. In his eight years as president of Uganda, Idi Amin loved, developed, and was a patriotic leader. A lot of infrastructure is said to have been built during his time. Although much was lost during the war and during the political instability that happened during his time, he is said to have brought in the first color TV and um, during his time Air Uganda was introduced as the official flag bearer of Uganda. It was one of the biggest airlines on the African continent and Entebbe International Airport was one of the busiest airports and considered the best landing spot on the African continent. Unfortunately, um, along the way, Air Uganda collapsed. But the good news is that it's just been recently revamped. So it actually resumed commercial flights on the 28th of September. If you can see the mean, what are you going to do with it? We are going to eat his flesh. <laughs> <laughs> if actually want his head in Tanzania, his head. We we'll put him in, in a museum if, if it's possible. I am not a person who is afraid of being assassinated because I believe in God and I know exactly when and how I will die. And uh, this is secret. That's why I was the last man. I remember I was um, just coming out of church when I heard the news that Amin had passed on. It didn't mean much back then. I was still a very young little man. The news had been reported by, um, I think they said his Hajati, she was called Nalo Gomadina, with whom he was staying together with uh, several of, I think about 25 of his kids. It was told that she had pleaded with the government of Uganda, the then government, which was the, uh, the government of Yoweri Museveni, to have Idi Amin returned to Uganda. Um, this was at a time when he was bedridden with uh, uh, kidney problems. Um, but I guess they, they failed to agree, so the family decided to um, put Amin off life support in 2003, and he was announced dead. One of the biggest leaders on the African continent died quite a humble death in exile in Saudi Arabia. One thing that cannot and will never be ruled out is the fact that Idi Amin wrote his name in the books of African history and there will be no one that will ever erase that. Yeah, you might have some interesting discoveries, um, interesting things that you know about Idi Amin. Please go ahead and hit me 